Hey everybody, um, in this video we're going to talk about a different scenario of permutations or another scenario of permutations where we have some identical objects. Um, now yesterday, or in, in yesterday's videos, we talked about basic permutations with a certain amount of objects. We also talked about if you have a certain amount of objects and you only want to take a few of them at a time, and how do you arrange those. So if you're not familiar with those, you should probably go back and watch those videos first or look in your, your book for those uh, examples. Because um, this is like kind of a building on that. It's an additional thing. So um, before you watch this, you should make sure that you watch the videos from uh, April 13th and take the 10.2 uh, concept quiz, which is just kind of the basics. Okay, um, we're going to start with a basic example. This one actually was one of the questions on your concept quiz. Um, but it says, how many ways can the letters in the word math be rearranged? So there's four letters, but what you notice is that they're all this, they're all different letters. They're all distinct letters. Okay, so there's there's four different letters. So the idea here is you're just going to do basically four factorial. Okay, we're not choosing like only two of them. Like we're not saying how many ways are there to take two letters at a time and arrange it. Um, that would be a different story. This is just all, you're going to use all four letters. And so four factorial is equal to four times three times two times one. And if you think about it, the fundamental counting principle kind of applies here. And the idea is, if you're trying to make some arrangements of this word, for the first letter, the first event is choosing the first letter, you have four different choices. But as soon as you choose one of those letters, you only have three choices. And then as soon as you choose one of those letters, you only have two and, and one and so on. So these are all different events, choosing the first letter, the second letter, the third letter, the fourth letter. Those are all like events. And this is how many different ways there are for those events to occur with four letters, um, where you can't like reuse them. So this is just going to give us 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 1 is 24. So there's 24 ways to do that, OK? Um, now that's, that's from yesterday. That should be, that should be pretty, uh, pretty familiar. Now this one's a little bit different. And this is where we're going to kind of compare and contrast here, OK? So how many different ways can the letters in the word book be arranged? So the difference here is that there's two O's, right? So we have this identical object. We're going to assume these O's are just the same as each other, OK? Um, so there's something else that we have to do here to make this work. Uh, because if we, if we do four factorial, we're actually going to get too many things. And let me see if I can explain that, OK? What I'm going to do is I'm going to write a few, not all of them, but I'm going to write a few of the different um, orderings for the word book. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to come over here, and we're going to say there's a B. OK? And there's an O1 and an O2 and a K. OK? So we're going to start by just assuming that the O's are like different objects, like we did here. They were all different letters. And then kind of show what's going to happen from there. So let's just start ordering, kind of in, in alphabetical order. Let's, let's do the ones that would start with the, with the B in front, OK? So if we have B, and then we wanted to kind of go in the alphabetical order. The next letter after B would be K. And then we'd have O1. And then we'd have O2, right? So that would be one ordering of those letters. OK, also starting with the B and then having the K in the second position, we could have O2 right here and then O1 right here. So that's like kind of a similar ordering. But if we're doing it you know, this way, this is what, this is what we would have. OK, let's do it with the, so those are the different options with the B in the first position and the K in the second position. Let's say the B is in the first position, and now let's do the O1 in the second position. OK, well, then I could do K and O2, right? I could also do B and then O1 and then O2 and then K, which I kind of have here, but I'm not counting that one. All right. OK, now let's do the, the things where B is in first position and O2 is in the second position. So then I could do K and then O1. But then I could also do B, O2, O1, and K. OK, so those aren't all of them. Those are only the ones that have B in the front. Those are all the different orderings where B is the first letter. And notice there's, there's six of them there. OK, but let's take a look and see what's happening. We ordered the you know the O's, ones and twos, but if we think about it, we have too many we have too many things here. 
because we're going to assume that this right here, these guys, are the same word, right? It's just B-K-O-O. -O. Now, we ordered them, so just so you could see, like, if you do it, you know, if you consider them as different objects, you're going to get, you know, a bigger number than you want. But this is really the same ordering, right? Likewise, these guys are basically the same thing. If you didn't have those numbers there, it would be B-O-K-O, -O, right? And then these right here are also kind of the same. So when you start looking at all six of these, and you're like, really, there's, there's six different ways you can order them if you care about the O's being different. But if the O's are the same, then really there's only three, OK? So what you notice is there's, there's two times as many things that I need. There's two times as many orderings as I need. So if I do four factorial for this guy, right, four letters, four factorial, that's going to be way too many. I'm going to actually have to divide that in half because there are two ways to order the O's. For every ordering that I have, there's two ways to order the O's. You can have the, o, the O1 first or the O1 second, the O1 first or the O, sorry, O, O1 first or the O2 second, right? Like there, you can change the orderings of just the O's. So think about this. How many different ways are there to order two O's? Well, there's two factorial ways to do that, okay? So that's how you figure out how many different ways there are to letter those to order the uh, the letters in the word book. You do the total factorial over anything that's repeated, because when you have those repeats, you got to think about well, how many different ways are there to arrange those repeats? Okay, this is going to turn out to be four times two, to, or sorry, four times three, times two times one over two times one, which is going to give us twelve. Okay. So the idea is because there's two ways, or two factorial ways, which is two, to rearrange those O's, I have twice as many orderings. If I do four factorial, I have twice as many as I need. See, in this one, all the letters are different. I get 24 different options. Here, I have the repeats of the O's, so I only have 12 different options. And you can kind of see that by looking at these ones, right? There's like double. Each, each thing is doubled. Okay. So let's talk about this guy right here, because this, this formula is kind of confusing. What this means is what, however many objects you have goes on top. So n factorial. If I have n uh, four letters, then that's four factorial. OK, and on the bottom, I have this r1, r2, r3, all the way up to rk, and they're all factorial. And that just represents the number or, or the different things that are repeated. So in this case, I only have one like repeat, and it's the o's. So there's two O's, so I put a two factorial down here, and I'm done. Now if I had two K's, I'd have to put another two factorial. Or if I had three B's, I'd have to put a three factorial. Okay? So let's do another one with more repeats than just this one. Okay? So find the number of permutations of the letters of the word Mississippi. So this is going to be similar to some of the problems in your homework. And what you want to do first is you want to identify how many letters there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so there's 11. So on top, I'm going to have 11 factorial. Okay? Then what I have to do is divide it by all the different things that are repeated and how many of them are there. So I'm going to divide by, I'm going to look at all the repeats. So how many M's are there? There's just one. Okay, so don't worry about that. How many I's? Notice there's four I's. So I have to divide 11 factorial by four factorial because if you think about it, how many different ways are there to arrange just the i's in this one ordering? There's four factorial ways to rearrange all those i's. And so we have to divide out four factorial because we're going to have multiples of this. We're going to have Mississippi way too many times. If you just switch all the i's around, it's still going to say Mississippi. So you have to divide out how many ways there are to, to order just the i's. Okay. There's also four s's. So we have to divide out all the different ways there are to order the S's, because there's four factorial ways to order just the S's for every ordering that you have. So if I just switched all these S's around, it would still say Mississippi, right? But there's four factorial ways that I can do that and still get Mississippi. So we have to get rid of those. Okay, and then with the P's, there's two of those, so I'm going to put a two factorial down here. Okay, because again, if I rearrange the P's, there's two factorial ways to do that. I'm still going to get Mississippi. So we want to mix all the letters up, but some of them, they're going to be repeated. And you're like, well, that's the same as I had before, because all the I's are interchangeable, and all the S's are interchangeable, and all the P's are interchangeable. So this is what we got here, Okay, lots of different factorials. 
Now to simplify this, we're just going to kind of expand it out and cancel as many things as we can. So 11 times 10 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. All right, 4 factorial, 4 factorial, and 2 factorial. So we're just expanding this out, okay? So we're going to cancel some stuff. So notice there's a 4 here, and a 4 here, and a 3 here, and a 3 here, and a 2 here, and a 2 here, and a 1 here, and a 1 here. And the 1s we don't really need to worry about, right? Because dividing by 1 doesn't really matter. Okay, let's see if we can cancel anything else out. Well, we got like a 4 and a 2, right? Those can both go into 8. So you can cancel out the 4 and the 2, because those both go into 8. And you got a 3 times 2, those both go into 6. Okay. So when all is said and done, after you've done all your canceling, you're going to have 11 times 10 times 7 times 5. Okay? So you punch that into your calculator and figure out what that is. And I just realized that I don't have my calculator with me. So give me a sec. Be right back. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> got it. Um, so I got 11 times 10 times 7 times 5. Okay, so that's 3,850 ways. Okay. All right, let's do one more because, actually, I'll you it doesn't have to be letters. It can be other objects, right? So in this case, I have pennies, quarters, dimes, and I want to arrange them in a straight line. Okay, so total, I have 5 plus 2 plus 3, so that'd be 10, 10 objects, so total factorial, and then I just got to put all the repeats. So I got 5 pennies, I got 2 quarters, and I got 3 dimes. Okay, let's just do a, a quick example, I'll write this out. So let's say I order the pennies like this, penny, 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 quarter, quarter, dime, dime, dime. Okay. Well, when I do this 10 factorial, that's going to take into account every single rearranging of these letters, okay? Which includes switching all the P's around. So 10 factorial is going to give me way too many stuff, way too much stuff. Because if I just like rearrange all the P's, if I leave them all at the front, but I rearrange them all, how many ways are there to do that? Well, there's five factorial ways to rearrange just the P's, even if they stay in the position, this position. So I have to divide out 5 factorial because I'm going to get all these duplicates. It's going to, they're going to get a ton of stuff that looks like this, but just the P's are all rearranged. Okay, so I have to divide out that 5P. Same thing with the Q's. How many ways are there to just rearrange just the Q's? Well, for every ordering that you have, there's two ways to do that. So I'm going to have multiples. I'm going to have doubles where the Q's are just switched. Okay, same thing with the 3's. There's 3 factor, or the D's. There's three factorial ways for me to rearrange the dimes. And so I'm going to have all these duplicates of this exact ordering with just the P's rearranged. But we don't care. We're assuming those pennies are all identical or close enough. Okay. So this is how we do this. And we're going to simplify here. Now, if you have your calculator and you have a factorial button, you can do this. But what I want you to do is you know, show your work, show that you're writing this stuff out so that I can see, you know, at least I should see this so I can see you're setting up the right way. But then we can do a lot of simplifying before we even touch our calculator. Okay, so let's cancel out as much stuff as we can. So five and five and four and four and three and three and two and two and one and one. Again, like, we don't, we don't really care about these ones, okay? 3 times 2 is 6, so we can cancel out a 6 on top with that 3 times 2 on the bottom. And then 2 we can cancel out with, like, from the 10 or from the 8 or whatever, because 8 is um, 4 times 2. So if I cancel out a 2 with a 2 up here, I'll be left with the 4. And then I have 10 times 9 times 4 times 7. Okay, so let's check out and see what that is. 
10 times 9 times 4 times 7, 2,520. Okay. That's a lot less than 10 factorial because, again, 10 factorial is going to have all these like repeats that look almost exactly the same. The only difference is just similar letters are rearranged, and we, don't, we want to throw those extras out. Okay. So that's how you do permutations with identical objects. You take the total amount of objects, and you divide it by anything that's repeated and how many of them are there. So again, 10 coins, but there's 5 pennies, 2 quarters, 3 dimes. Or 11 letters, but there's 4 i's and 4 s's and 2 p's, right, that kind of thing. Um, this is the formula that they give you in the book, which is just kind of saying the same thing. Here's the total, and you have to put all the different objects that are repeated in a row, but you don't know how many of them are there are, so that's why you have this dot, dot, dot. You may only have one repeated object. Here we have three repeated objects and three repeated objects. You could have two repeated objects or five repeated objects. So these just represent all the different repeats you could potentially have. But I think this is a little bit easier to remember, and that's how you do, again, permutations with identical objects.